Hey there all you good folks who like to spend your money on buying physical copies of music. Uh, <laughs> hi, this is kind of a, uh, oh, I'll do this video tonight when I get home kind of video and I just got home. Um, just I've, some stuff that I've ordered recently has started showing up and I kind of just thought, well, you know what, I think I want to tell you about it because um, I don't know when I'm going to have a chance to tell you about it again. So let me tell you about what's been coming in through the door here today as well as in the last few days. Okay, so first of all, this has been kind of sitting in the background. I think the last one or two videos I did. This is Yes, Mirror to the Sky, their latest album just released. I think it was <clears throat> near the end of May. Um, double disc here, which actually isn't really necessary in a way because all the music here actually could fit on one disc. But as I understood it, first of all, all the songs on the first disc are a band effort, whereas the songs on the second disc are mostly Steve Howe compositions. Of course, everybody's playing, but I think he did most of the writing. And also, I think the record company wanted them, Inside Out, wanted them to do one disc that could also be one vinyl album. And then the other one could be, I don't know, whatever they wanted it to be. But, you know, when I first got this, okay, so first of all, uh, I guess there's a lot to say, but I'm trying not to say too much. Yes's Heaven and Earth album. I really wanted it to be a great album. And there was so much criticism about it. And I kept insisting it's not that bad. And I kept listening to it, hoping it was going to get better and better. And it didn't. And after a while, I just simply didn't feel like listening to it anymore. And I did listen to it again not that long ago. But I felt it's such a languid album. It just seems like... Like after you've had a massive prog overdose and your brain is totally fried and you're just sitting there going like, uh, maybe that's the album to play because it's not going to overload you in any way. So anyway, I was disappointed. The Quest came out and some there was kind of some excitement about it, but I didn't hear any great things and I thought, ah, maybe I don't need to get it so soon. And then this one was coming out and a lot of... I, I checked the reviews first. I think I checked five different YouTube channel reviews, Sea of Tranquility, uh, Notes Reviews, Chris Chris Nolan, Michael Nolan? No, I forget what his name is. Sorry. <laughs> and a couple of other ones. And most of them had pretty fair reviews. Like they're saying, it's better than the last two albums. There are a lot of great moments on here or very good moments, but it is, of course, not going to compete with anything from the classic years. Um, but overall, it, I got a pretty good impression about it. Uh, I think it was Chris Nolan. Is it Chris Nolan? Anyway, he's a, a musician. It's his favorite band, and he gave this a very high rating, giving very good scores for most of the songs. Sea of Tranquility, Notes Reviews, they had some some things, you know, to say that, that were not so favorable. Um, I got it, I listened to it the first time, and it kind of just, you know, just went right past me almost. By the end of it, I thought, what what did I listen to? It was easy for my mind to wander. So I started listening to it again and I just felt it's so soft. So that night I just stopped listening to it and I quickly threw together a playlist of death, thrash and black metal and listened to that on the way home because I really felt I needed something to give me an adrenaline boost here. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I almost did a video saying that I wasn't really impressed with it, but I decided to give it a listen again this morning, and I have a long commute, so I actually had a chance to listen to this whole album three times today. It is actually a lot better. It gets better with each listen. The third listen, I thought, yeah, okay, yeah, it's pretty good. And the fourth and fifth listen, I found more and more to, that I like about it. And honestly, now I am starting to get curious about the quest. I know the quest is not really considered all that great, but it is now the only Yes Studio album that I don't have, so maybe thanks to this one I might want to check it out. Thing is, money is has been kind of tight here the last few months and I haven't been buying so much stuff just because I can't. However, <laughs> recently I did. Okay, Next one up here, this is Karma Moy. This is an Italian prog band, Room 101. This was uh, released actually two years ago, and I have three other Karma Moy albums. I've done a video where I included Karma Moy in the video. I was able to feature some music from two of their albums. Again, when they released the album before this, I think I did a year-end video where I featured 12 albums, and I included that album and some of the music in there as well. I, I do this all with permission. Like if you go to my playlists, you'll see one that says, listen to these artists. 
all of the videos in that playlist feature music with permission from the artists or the record label. So Karma Moy are mentioned in at least two of them. But anyway, Room 101 came out and I had three Karma Moy albums and I thought, yeah, I know it's going to be good, but I kind of I kind of want to find other bands too. So I ended up spending my money on, you know, finding other bands to listen to and just doing other things. But recently they announced on their Facebook page or maybe it was a Bandcamp. No, it was a notice, a message from the band through Bandcamp saying that uh, it was the two year anniversary of this album and it was 30% off. So I immediately went over and ordered it. Um, yeah, 2,500 yen basically. Uh, it was at like, like 20, 22 dollars or something, including shipping from Italy. So that was pretty good. So I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but uh, it's still on the wrap, but there it is. And they have started work on their next album now. So I think this is their fifth album, possibly. Anyway, okay. And then the other stuff, just really, just uh, I came to work today and it was like coming through the mailbox. So. One of these here, I'm just bringing this home now. This is Hammerhead. You know, I just did a video about Hammerhead, new wave of British heavy metal band. I think one or two videos back, Hammerhead. This is an album called Destroyer, which was actually the band's original name way back in 76, 77. Kind of looks like a alien here, H.R. Giger's alien. But this is just a collection of all their old demos and their one single and B-side going back to the late 70s and early 80s. So this replaces uh, Will to Survive, which came out in 2005, which was just a collection of songs that guitarist Buzz Elliott put together as a kind of, uh, you know, CD to sell. And then the record label said, we want to issue it as a proper CD. And so then they got you know, another record label, signed, they signed to another record label, and then that, the label said, we want to put out all your old stuff. So there are 17 tracks on here. I see Lochinvar is on here three times. I know they did a demo in 1984 with singer Bill Branch, formerly of Necromandus. And the other two versions, I'm guessing one of them might be the 1978 demo version and maybe one other version without Bill Branch, or maybe it's a live one, I'm not really sure. Um, Lonely Man is also on here twice, so one might be the B-side version from 1981. The other one might be the original demo from 1978, not sure. But uh, anyway, um, that's basically a collection of all the stuff that Hammerhead did uh, during their first run from 76 to 86, uh, and basically demos with one single. So that's a, it's a nice thick package here too, you know? It's got a bit of weight to it, which is nice. Hopefully there's reading material inside. And the other one is Hammerhead's The Sin Eater, which came out in 2015. This was their first album of new material. I've talked about this all in my video about Hammerhead. So, um, you know, they had a new vocalist uh, join them for this here, and it's an album of new material. Angels Fall is a great song if you like that classic new wave of British heavy metal sound. There's a video for it on YouTube. Um, yeah, just, it was available, I had to get it. And of course, this is the, the, the latest album, Lords of the Sun, which Buzz Elliott sent me. In my video about Yammer, Yammerhead, <laughs> wow, what did that, that's because I'm yammering. No, Hammerhead. <laughs> Um, there are samples of music and whatever didn't come from this album here just came from files that Buzz Elliott sent me so that I could use them in the video. But now I actually do have the CDs and I promised I would spend my money on the band. Okay, then the other thing was um, the other day I was looking to buy a Uriah Heap t-shirt and what happened? <laughs> what happened exactly? Um, oh yeah, actually, no, uh, I was going to buy a Uriah Heap t-shirt and then I found Uriah Heap's Innocent Victim, which has been going for like seven, eight thousand yen, um, everywhere these days. It's really expensive. Even used one is like four or five thousand yen. Suddenly there it was as a brand new cop album for like 2,300 yen or something on Amazon. So yeah, I ordered that. Um, uh, Fallen Angel, which I also can't get because it's too expensive. I bought a, a... A used copy where the CD is in good condition, but all the, the paperwork inside is, is really crappy. Um, but it was like 700 yen or something, which is what, like like 550 or whatever in US dollars? I don't know. But uh, anyway, so there was a new version available, but you know, it was a little bit expensive. Still over 3,000 yen is a, still like, you know, over 2,500 is where it starts getting expensive for me to buy a CD. And it got snapped up in no time. So anyway, I ordered Innocent Victim. Haven't got it yet, but uh why did i start talking about uriah heap 
I think it's because I just started snooping around at other things on Amazon and some of the stuff that I had put in my shopping cart to get eventually the price dropped. One of them was an album that was over 4,000 yen and I thought yeah, I'm probably not gonna buy it at that price and then there it was for like 2,500 or something and then I started snooping around to see um, because two of the CDs that I wanted to get were coming through Disc Union. I just decided to go straight to the Disc Union page rather than through Amazon and I found that it was even a little bit cheaper. Then after putting two discs in the shopping cart, they said if you have 50 and more, it's free shipping. Oh damn it, it means I have to buy a third CD. So I went to my Amazon cart to see what I had on standby and then thought what might I want to get soon? What are the prices on Disc Union and are they available and it turned out that one of the albums that I'd heard a couple of good things about from two different videos on YouTube um, was available for a thousand yen cheaper than Amazon. Disc Union were having a sale on it. So here we go. Um, I watched two videos of um, people talking about this album. One guy mentioned uh, Seven Impale, their third album Summit and then Notes Reviews also mentioned this album. They did a review of it both of them giving it a very favorable review. I have Seven Impale's debut album, and I think it's really cool. I think they are a band out of Norway, a progressive rock band, but featuring a lot of like brass, like horns, um, saxophones anyway. And there was just a kind of uniqueness about their debut album, a kind of fun, whimsical spirit to it, as well as a kind of unique sound I felt. So I really liked the debut and I thought I should probably someday check out another Seven and Pale album. And I heard the second one was not as thrilling as the first one, but that this one here might be the best of the three. So yeah, it was available for a reasonable price and I picked it up then. Uh, here it is, fresh out of the box today, still in the wrap. I'll have to listen to it during the week sometime. Then uh, another one that the person who mentioned Seven and Pale the first time was actually mentioning five or six different albums and he mentioned Mysteries. What is this called here? Redemption, latest album by Mystery. Now I have two Mystery albums with uh, ben Benoit David singing before he went off to join Yes for the Fly From Here album. And after that, the next three Mystery albums have all been rated very highly on Prague Archives. And I always thought I should get another one. So now this one came out and it hasn't even, currently it has an even higher rating than the other three. So this was the one, it was like over 4,000 yen. I thought, ah, I'm not gonna get it, you know. But then it showed up, um, the price suddenly dropped and Disc Union had it for about the same as Amazon. So there it is. So Mystery are a uh, progressive rock band from uh, Neo Prague, progressive rock band anyway, from Quebec. And their discography is stretched out over a very long time. I think they're coming up to 30 years now, but this is, I think like their eighth album or something like that. But anyway, they always get very high reviews on Prague Archives. I like the two albums I have, so I thought let's get something else and here it is. And if I really like it, I'll probably start eyeballing the three that I missed in between. And the last one here, this is a Japanese band called Sai. They are basically a black metal, Japanese black metal band, which means it has its own kind of flavor, but also strongly avant-garde. Some albums being way more avant-garde than others, and the ones that are not as avant-garde have a progressive feel to them. So their previous album, Air to Despair, I saw the album cover, I don't know, somewhere, probably on Amazon, and I really liked it. Um, I'll put it here so you can see this you know, lovely looking woman is watering, I think it's dead plants in the windowsill, but in the background there's like broken glass on the ground, there's a shadow on the wall. So it just has this really weird feeling about it, like what the hell just happened? <laughs> and here she is smiling watering plants. But anyway, I actually really liked the album. Um, I haven't listened to it so much uh, since I got it. I think I listened to it a few times and liked it. but. I reviewed it for Metal Music Archives and then some people in Metal, Metal Music Archives said, oh, you should check out their older stuff. It's even better than this one. And then I bought one of their older albums and I felt it was kind of noisy in a way, like it just didn't sit right in my ears like the other album did. So anyway, this one came out and at the end of the year, um, what's it called anyway? Chiki. Um, at the end of the year, there were at least two videos of people talking about their favorite metal albums from 2022 and um, two videos where people mentioned this one and then I commented, oh, I have one of 
uh, I have a couple of the other albums and they said like, oh, you, you'll really dig this one. So anyway, as I said, I had to get that 50 and over to free shipping. So I searched about my Amazon cart to see what this union had for about the same price. And this one was a thousand yen cheaper. And so I scooped it up. So I'm looking forward to hearing that as well. So now I have, you know, I'm pretty much familiar with the Hammerhead stuff, but I got to listen to it anyway. Got to listen to Karma Moy and uh, Mystery. Um, seven and pale sigh here as well. We are coming up to July where I will have three bands to feature for my first 10 albums of a band. We're going to be looking at Queen, Yes, and Deep Purple. And then in August, I believe Styx and Pink Floyd. So ah, I've got a lot of music I have to listen to over the next couple of months for these videos I'm going to make. Anyway, that's what came in through the door. I just need to get you Rye Heap's Innocent Victim and everything that's on order will be here. And then I probably really can't order anything until I make some more money somehow. <laughs> I say somehow, but let me just say that I am going to have my first photo exhibition in many years. I think the last time I did it was around 2007. And I have all these photo books that I've made that I'm just storing in the closet. And so I'm going to have a photo exhibition in a small cafe gallery in Chichibu City out in the mountains of Saitama featuring basically locally uh, captured photographs, uh, canyons and rivers and waterfalls and mountains and so on. So hopefully I'll sell a lot of books, maybe even sell some photos and get some extra money so I can, you know, maybe buy a few more CDs. <laughs> anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video sometime in the near future. Cheers. Bye.